So uh, I'm just going to bring back some high school memories. So nothing really new, I guess. Um, let's start. Okay, if you see these pictures, maybe you already watch this uh, both uh, movies. And let's see uh, the Jurassic Park. If you know, if you remember of the movie, uh, it's dinosaur there was uh, born due to the principle of genetic engineering. And today we can only um, synthesize uh, protein from the genetic engineering, but you know that our living organism is built of proteins. So if we're upscaling it, it's possible to really um, born a single organism to, uh, from this genetic engineering. And this too is application of uh, genetic modification. If you know at the last series of this uh, divergent uh, serial, they are divided people into this uh, genetically damaged and genetically pure. So in the future, maybe that most of the people are genetically modifi modified because they receive this gene treatment to make them like more superior and I don't know, like more smarter, like more attractive and so on. And other application of a genetic mo modification is we can also make a human to be resistant to a disease to be resistant from a virus or from a bacteria, and to design a baby, maybe, and uh, to mute the DNA that make us aging. Now we have this uh, genetic, uh, genetically modified organism, with, as you know, like fruits and vegetables, but um, of course it's all possible in the future that we also modify uh, the human genetic. And now it's... Uh, we only have this gene therapy for a gene disorder, but in the future, maybe if some people like infest, we can also possible to achieve these things. Okay, so we're gonna talk about what we already achieved today. First of all, I'm gonna mention about this DNA fingerprint. You know that every people have a different fingerprint. It's also the same case with DNA. So everyone is a little bit different. So there's a part of your DNA which is a non-coding region, also called the junk DNA. And everyone has a different sequence in this junk DNA. And uh, what we can uh, use from this information is, for example, paternity tests. So this is how it looks like, like around 20 years ago. Firstly, when they first discovered about DNA, uh, DNA fingerprint, for example, we have a a children and then we don't know which father is the children and this is the mother this is the mother and the children and then this two father suspect father one father two and you know that their DNA is uh, passed from both parents mother and father so the children will carry DNA from the both parents so if you can guess which one is the father first second Okay, so you see this bands is DNA from the children. So this bands must correspond to the mother and the father. Okay, for example, I, I'll take this two example. This is belong to the mother, and this is belong to the father. So each of band here either belong from the mother or belong to the father. So we can sure that yes, the father is the father too. Easy. Okay, the next application is forensic. Suppose you have the murder case and then there's a blood stain there. We can also do a DNA fingerprint and see, for example, we have this blood stain there in the criminal case and we have seven suspects, we just match and we know who's guilty. And today it was like very classical method and today we can carry out DNA analysis or we can call it genotyping. And uh, there are so many techniques already available. The first one is uh, gel electrophoresis, is the oldest one. And then the southern blot and the PCR, this is the uh, techniques that I am, uh, I research, uh, my research was. And also the recently is the DNA sequencing. It can give you information base per base in the resolution of base per base. Now let's talk about the scientific uh, background about it. So what is DNA? Why it's so powerful? What it what it's can code life? So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. 
you might be familiar with, with this structure, right? Okay, so this structure, we call it double helix. And if we zoom out, it looks like this. Actually, the name itself, it stands for what it, is, it really is. So um, here, we have something, this two blue and yellow thing here, we call it a sugar and phosphate backbone. Uh, this is the phosphate part, and then this is the sugar part, uh, sugar part. And what sugar is there is like ribose. So the relative is like sucrose, glucose, fructose, and this is ribose, same, it's sugar. And there's this phosphate part here, and then acid, because this gives the acid uh, acidity properties of the DNA. But the most important part of the DNA is lies here. So if you see, we call it the base nucleotide. There are four kinds of base nucleotide, and two of them like pairing together. So T is always pairing with A, G is always pairing with C. And there are four of them. So these all codes of life, which brings you all these kind of properties, it's only combination of these four base nucleotide. Okay, so where are they located? Of course, you know they're inside every cell of your body. But it really depends if it's like eukaryotic cells or prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells is, for example, plant and animal cells. And then prokaryotic cells is uh, bacteria or one cell organism. Okay, so just imagine cells is just like a bowl of soup. And eukaryotic cells is like chicken soup. You have so many things inside there. And then prokaryotic, uh, in the eukaryotic cells, I mentioned that this is from examples from plant and animal. Can you tell which cells this belong to? Plant or animal? Animal. animal. Okay, so you remember a little bit about your biology. Okay, <laughs> so in this uh, eukaryotic cell, most of you maybe think that uh, DNA is inside the chromosome and chromosome is inside the nucleus. That's true, but that's not only that. We have also DNA which is located in another part of the cells, which is called organellar DNA. In the plant cells, it is inside mitochondrial, and in the, pla uh, in the plant cells, it's inside the plastid, in the chloroplast. It's the part where the photosynthesis happens. And in the chromosomal DNA, it's uh, passed from both mother and father, but in the organellar DNA, it's only passed from the mother. So if you want to do a DNA fingerprint, which DNA you're taking? Chromosomal DNA. For example, you want to do the paternity test. You cannot like see who is the father by the uh, mitochondrial DNA, right? And in the prokaryotic cells, if it's if it was um, a chicken soup, then it's just like a cream soup, nothing inside there. So the DNA is just swimming in there. Okay. So actually how this DNA can shape us inside and out, how this DNA code like everything. So you know that uh, this DNA, it's basically a sequence of those four bases and it's encoded as, you remember those bases, C, G, T, A, and three of these nucleotide will be translated into one amino acid one amino acid and uh, one amino acids together, they will uh, build a proteins. And proteins is exactly what build us from the head to toe. Your hair, your nails, your blood, everything. So it looks like this. How's the process? It's, it's uh, in the gene expression. It simply look like this. So DNA. So DNA is, uh, consists of this uh, coding region and non-coding region. So only the coding region will be transcripted into the RNA during the gene expression process. And this, in this RNA, we take this out from the nucleus. And then in the cytoplasm outside the nucleus, it will be translated each of the 
uh, every three of the nucleotide base will be translated into one amino acid, and all amino acid uh, together will uh, create a polypeptide chain, and then you know that proteins characterize your phenotype. So this only one example. There is a red rose, and there is a white rose. So there's a protein which is responsible for these properties. Easy. Okay, so let's narrow the application into the medicine. What really we can do with this uh, DNA? So we can do a gene therapy. Very successful, um, uh, very successful experiment was like with the XCID, if you know, the bubble boy. No. Yeah. You know? You don't know? Okay, so this bubble boy is like a, a human which is uh, born without any kind of immunity. So it's like genetic disorder. And then there's a successful therapy, gene therapy for this. So people who have very like short expected of life, which is, you know, everything needs to be set sterilized, uh, their clothes, their food, now uh, they can like uh, uh, totally cure with this gene therapy. And then pharmacogenomics, I will mention in a little bit. And then gene tests, why it's important because you can predict like uh, how much you have risk of like cardiovascular disease, like uh, some genetic disease by this gene test. Maybe when, uh, when you are pregnant and then you want to like sequence uh, the genetic of your baby and you can, uh, after it's uh, out that, oh, your baby have a 20% case, 20% possibility of, uh, I don't know, certain disease. And uh, what the benefit we can uh, get from that? First, uh, we can do uh, to improve the diagnosis of the disease because we can do early detection. For example, cancer is one form of the mutation. So we can also predict if uh, someone might have a cancer in the future. And earlier detection of genetic predisposition, rational drug design, because the most of the um, most of the drug target is uh, proteins. They are targeting in your receptor or, or your enzyme. They are all proteins. So even the drug response is really depends on your DNA. And uh, gene therapy and personalized or custom drugs. So we can be different in many ways, include this. So for example, there are uh, people, two people, with the same symptoms, same findings, same disease, and uh, different passion and treat with the same drugs, and it can result with different effects. How? There are so many factors. This, ethnicity, and one of them is genetic factors, and one explanation is because of this, gen genetic variation. The most genetic variation which um, uh, exists in the human is called SNP. What is SNP? It's a single nucleotide polymorphism. So uh, this is a variation in the single nucleotide. So only one single you know, base nucleotide. Uh, maybe the C is uh, exchanged to T somehow. And this is uh, what is different between mutation and polymorphism. In the mutation, the frequency is less than 1% but in the polymorphism is uh, greater than 1%, how we can differentiate the polymorphism and mutation. And for example, we have this healthy DNA, and then one of the base nucleotide here just changed into another, and then one amino acid here is changed, and then we got the different kind of proteins, different works, maybe like not even doesn't work at all. So, how is it going to happen? Maybe in the future, when you go to the pharmacy, you're not going to give the recipe, your uh, prescription, but you're going to give your DNA sequence. Because, you know, the drug is really depends on your DNA. That's it. Thank you. So, thank you very much for a beautiful presentation. I think DNA and biology, all in all, is something that we need to learn. So, and so far we have a lot of questions to you. Questions? Okay. Um, so, is it possible to mod modify humans genetically uh -huh. that were already born? It's great. Awesome. 
Yes, yes, of course. Uh, that the XCID was one of the example, but you know that to modify the human genetically after they're born means that when you're born, you're you're already grown up. There are more cells are in your body when compared to when you're a baby, and when we want to modify the genetic means that we want to modify all of the cells in your body. So. The, effic uh, the efficiency may be like uh, different, but still, for example, you're sick, maybe this bubble boy is sick because of the, there's a protein that killing uh, his uh, antibodies, and this protein is encoded by certain DNA. Now we want to fix that DNA. Maybe not all of the cells in the body who get uh, cured, uh, who get uh, cured with this gene therapy, maybe like 50%, but that's enough. There are still some uh, antibodies that can survive that can um, escape from these uh, proteins. But yeah, it's, a, it's possible, of course. Okay, and mm -hmm. since it's possible, would you like to be genetically modified? Uh, I'd like to be taller, maybe. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, interesting question. Why are we not designing babies? Okay. Like right. Yeah, that's really interesting. That's a really interesting question. Actually, well, you can, but this is the um, to modify a DNA is such of what I call like dangerous science, because okay, you put you you, you for example, you already uh, encode. Oh, this DNA will uh, maybe you want to have a baby with green eyes when and then we already genotype. Oh, this is a this DNA is coding for the green eyes and you want to somehow insert it to your DNA. And the problem is the selectivity. Even though now we already have a such technology called uh, CRISPR to somehow make it more selective to only, you know that this property is uh, specific, specifically located in this maybe chromosome number two, locus number this, and this position, and it needs to be exactly inserted in that region. But we cannot be always 100% sure. If it's like somehow inserted to another region, like we don't know, and maybe this is, if it's not coding region, then it's okay. But if it's coding region and it's coding like something essential to your body, then yeah, we cannot know what will happen. That's like, it's something too risky. Well, in the future, maybe it's possible if we can somehow deliver this gene into like really specifically targeted into S certain region. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, big question. Mm -hmm. If we actually genetically modify the baby who is not born, mm -hmm. uh, can it come up so that the kid would die? Oh, what do you mean die? Like you said there is a risk. <laughs> yeah, of course there is a risk. So yeah. Can, can the, this uh, baby? Mm -hmm. die? <laughs> yes. Yeah, maybe. Well, it's just a simple. For example, maybe, um, you know, some of the uh, cancer is encoded by some receptor, for example, and then it hits that receptor, and then it's like, you know, it doesn't work, and then, okay. yeah, of course, it's, it's possible. Okay, I think a big question to all of us, it's about aging. Mm -hmm. aging. Is there a specific gene responsible for aging? Well, there's some theory of that, and then people try to do research about it. And if you know um, that, you know, every day our cell divides. And in the division of the cells, some of part of their DNA is like taken away. It's not completely the same uh, as the cells before. And th I'm just going to tell you one theory. It's called the uh, telomere theory. So there's a, this telomere is encapped the bot end of the chromosome. So every of your uh, uh, every of your cells divide, it will cap your chromosome most likely into same as the uh, parents' chromosome, but it wouldn't be like completely uh, same. That would be like several nucleotides, which is like, um, you know, thrown away because of the, uh, due to this uh, replication. And there's some research that uh, this telomere itself is also degraded over the time. And the length of the telomere itself, it's uh, 
can be associated to the edge, to, to edge. So the older you are, the shorter the telomere. And then they said when you have no telomere anymore, then your uh, division of the cells is like failed, then you die. So there's some theory about this. And then people try to do research to make this telomere last longer, like more preserve. And they can the length is can be preserved like uh, longer than the normal. And then they this theorists like say that maybe we can uh, you know slower the aging by this. But there are also more theories about that. But that's why it's, we call it dangerous science. Yes, and maybe the last question for now. Um, so the person asked, should we pay a lot of money to study our DNA? so to know what we actually need to eat? Well, it will be associated to the next uh, lecture, I think. It's called biohacking. So uh, actually, there's this um, uh, study field which is called if there's a pharmacogenomics and also called a nutrigenomics, which is people eat uh, due to their, um, you know, DNA, DNA characteristic. For example, it's easy example is, uh, is there anyone who like lactose intolerance? That's also the form of, of a DNA expression. So if we do, for example, if you have a baby and you do DNA sequencing and you know that like uh, you are uh, lactose intolerance, then of course you can eat according to that. So, yeah. yeah. Okay.